Welcome to my most ambitious build to date. I played around with some small photo etch, used quite a bit of super glue and rigging thread, and in the end, my first ship model turned out mostly okay. Actually, I'm pretty happy with how it looks considering that I mostly build airplanes. As 2021 rolled around and economies started to open back up, I was thinking to myself, how can I come up with an excuse to remain an introverted hermit and seclude myself in my modeling bench? I know, I'll build the smallest, most photo etch covered model I can, and I'll spend four months putting it all together. Now I have a valid excuse to continue with my own self-imposed quarantine. There were 11 photo etch frets that came with brass gun barrels from Flyhawk. For the smaller guns, I bought the Fine Molds plastic set, which is ultra detailed compared to the pieces that came with the kit. Also, the anchor chain is molded onto the deck and looks like a piece of trash. I replaced it with an actual chain that came with a wooden deck sticker. More on that sticker later on in the build. I figured this would be an easy kit since there's only three colors, gray, tan, and red. Uh, just kidding. If you only bought the Fujimi model kit, it's a straightforward build with a decent amount of detail for this smallest scale. Once you had the photo etch, it's not something I'd recommend for beginners, and I would have had a hard time if I did not have a photo etch bending tool. I put that purchase off for a while because they're expensive, but it definitely paid for itself with this build. It's so much easier to make a clean and crisp bend with the tool. Also, I expect it to last forever and hope that I never have to buy another one. Yeah right, we'll see how that goes. On the large, flat brass parts, I'll scratch the surface with a file so it helps the glue make a stronger bond. I've had issues bonding large surfaces together in the past, so making these microscopic ridges should help. When it came to painting the interior of the superstructure, I painted it as I went along. I didn't do anything fancy, mostly just black or gray, but I was worried that if I put it all together and then painted it, it would be too enclosed and my airbrush wouldn't reach the inner surfaces. And you don't want to risk that brass color showing through from certain angles once you get it all put together. I probably threw away more plastic than I actually used on this build. Everything seemed to be modified and upgraded with photo etch. Also, the Flyhawk instructions that came with the photo etch were highly questionable. There was a lot of interpretation needed to figure them out. They clearly put all the effort into making excellent parts and then they cut corners on the assembly instructions. There's quite a lot of deciphering needed. Sometimes when I replace a plastic part with photo etch, like what I'm gonna do here with the cage that goes on top of the stack, I'll leave it intact and then bend the photo etch around it before I demolish it with my plastic cutters. The reason I didn't film the jack stay application, which is those ribs that go around the stacks, is because they were a complete nightmare. They're far from perfect, and I was lucky to get them looking semi-decent. Sorry, I do not have a great technique for how to apply these in one 700th scale. Yet. The ammo boxes for all the guns are depicted as smooth, rectangular prisms that are molded onto the deck. So I'll replace them with photo etch that I had to bend together simply because one of the faces has some raised details that really come to life when you add a panel line wash. With all the detailed photo etch, it didn't look right just using the basic guns that came with the kit, so I replaced them with some highly detailed plastic guns from Fine Molds that just have extremely thin barrels that look really good at scale.
this plane was fun to build. The kit came with two of them, which was good because the first one literally went up in flames as I experimented with super glue and a lighter. The second plane was a success and I used my punch and die set to back mask and paint the Hinamaru markings, although they do come as decals if you don't want to mask them off. Even though I only built one of the planes, I got a lot of practice with attaching the propeller probably three or four times because I was sloppy and kept knocking it off. The launch rails were another nightmare, similar to the jack stays that go around the smokestacks. Fortunately, there were spare lengths as they're so tiny and the average pair of eyeballs cannot discern the places where I had excessive amounts of glue. I even used VBS debonder with a little bit of success, but it was definitely not as easy as their product review made it look possibly because I was trying to use it on a super small piece. I had an internal debate with myself about whether to paint the deck or use the wooden sticker. I decided to use a sticker because the bases of the superstructure, guns, and stacks were all molded onto the deck and I would have had a ton of back masking on the gray parts while I sprayed the deck tan and the sticker was a quick way around that. Plus, it actually is wood. It looks really great. It's super sticky, so what more could you ask for? Maybe it's cheating. I don't care. It came out looking good, but you do need to pay attention because there's maybe a half millimeter height to the sticker, so it brings everything on the deck up a tiny little bit. It came in three pieces, and I did end up cutting it apart at strategic points to help with the application. This was the first of several washes I applied. I've actually been favoring making my own oil washes, which I'll do later in the build, instead of the Tamiya wash, which I think is closer to an enamel. Basically, I've just been preferring oil as of late. Before I put the deck sticker on, I'd already drilled a couple holes in the deck where I could thread the anchor chain through it and then put a tiny bit of super glue to hold it in place. The molded anchor chain that came with the base kit was probably one of my least favorite parts. It looks really lame and it got covered up by the deck sticker anyways. And this new anchor chain is a significant upgrade. Highly recommend it. It actually came with the deck sticker that I purchased. The railings on this build add so much character, really to any ship build but they're not cut to length, so I would eyeball the correct distance on where to make my bends. I did this uh, with a pair of tweezers in my finger. Then I set them in place with liberal amounts of thick super glue so I could make adjustments before I added some extra thin super glue to fully secure it. There was a lot of test fitting involved here before I permanently attached all these different sections of railing. And there was not a lot of spare railing either, so I got fortunate and did not have to throw a lot away because I would have run out otherwise. This is probably the most satisfying part of the build. Finally, everything's coming together. It's been three months that I've compressed into 10 minutes. And overall, the whole thing took about four months working on and off. And I made one or two other planes, you know, simultaneously. I definitely would get annoyed at a few points along the way and have to set this thing aside. I think the rails that are on the flight deck and those jack stay ribs that wrap around the smokestacks were two of the points where I set the thing aside for a week or two and uh, just had to think, what am I doing here? 
As usual, I have no idea what I'm attaching here, so I would really appreciate it if someone could tell me what these are used for. I have no idea. I probably should have painted this earlier. Actually, I know I should have painted this earlier, but using a water-based acrylic will make it a little bit easier to correct any mistakes I make. Plus, I never claimed to be an expert at building ships. The photo etch set even came with little oars for the rowboats. Very cool and a nice touch. The hull looked so clean at this point, so I decided to weather it a little bit more. I made the switch from the pre-made Tamiya accent washes to my custom oil paint mixes for the final weathering washes. Next time I'll do this before I attach the deck structures, but as I said before, it's my first ship and I'm experimenting as I go along. Most of the rigging I attached with medium thin super glue so I could dip the tip and then have it dry quick, but not too quick before I attach it to the ship. It wasn't easy, it hurt my eyes, and the video I'm showing you is all my successes with most of the failures already edited out. I don't always get it right on the first try, or the second, or the third. I spent so much time looking at the photo etch instructions that I overlooked the basic instructions about painting this part. It's obviously not the ideal time to paint it. In fact, it sucked, but I made it work anyways. I definitely made this harder than it needed to be. Next time I'm going to have to buy a magnifying visor. It started to get a little bit ridiculous with the rigging. I've got a crazy amount of lighting at my bench, but I could still barely keep up with how tiny this thread was. It's even harder trying to film what I'm doing since it's at an angle and the light source is all positioned to be convenient for the camera and not necessarily my eyes. In some instances, on the railings, I would actually thread the rigging through the railing, hold it in place while I put a dab of super glue on the railing itself. At such a small scale, don't necessarily need to tie it in place. Just getting it run through the railing is sufficient enough. I still didn't like how the hull looked. I thought it looked too pristine, so I put this mix over a gloss coat, let it dry for five minutes, then dabbed it off with a sponge. If the paint won't come off, put a little mineral spirits on the sponge and dab at it some more. A little bit of green at the waterline adds some algae. Once everything was dry a couple days later, it looked way too overdone. But no worries, I used my base color of XF9 hull red, heavily thinned about 10 to 1, to really dull out the weathering. So it's slow going and you got to do it little by little, but it just adds more color variation along the way and it really looked great in the end. To finish this off, I applied the decal to some aluminum foil. That way you can bend it around and make it look wavy like it's flowing in the wind. 